Hello and welcome back, this time for a moving iron measurement system. Moving iron measurement system. What is this? What is this about? Again, I'm going to explain it. Going to explain it. Uh, we have again some rotating part. Yeah. There is an iron piece which is fixed. Piece of iron which is fixed. Yeah. And then we have iron piece which is shaped a little bit like this. I can age, let's say. Yeah. Back in the heights. <laughs> And this inner iron piece, this can move. Yeah? This can move. Okay? At this inner iron piece, we again have a spring. So this is again spring loaded. Okay. And this again has some pointer, which is pointing at a scale. Pointing at a scale. Of course, we also need some some uh, coil, yeah? but this time this coil is not moving. This time I have a connection here, and this time I will wind my wires here. across always this iron which is stand still and then I will go back. Okay. What happens? Here again have my measured voltage okay. and of course I have again my measurement current. Okay, again I have my measurement current. Uh, this measurement current is producing magnetic field again in here. Yeah. This is ferromagnetic material, this is iron, ferromagnetic material. And this means the standstill part and the moving part, they are magnetized in a similar way. Okay. They are magnetized in a similar way. Here, this is the standstill part. In between here, there is no, there is no iron. Okay, this is not ferromagnetic material. And if the standstill iron and the moving iron yeah, are magnetized in the same manner, they will start to distract each other. Yeah. So the internal, the internal rotating part will try to get away from the fixed part and this will then rotate yeah? and depending and will again load the spring and again the pointer will point to a different direction okay so here at the moving coil yeah it was a magnetic force with the electromagnet interacting with a permanent magnet and here we do have uh, a very similar approach yeah? but this time we we'll use the magnetic force which are distracting we will magnetize two things in the same matter with our current right? that's it yeah and here i can here i can this this uh wire I can make really thick and fat yeah and then I can simply use this as ampere meter yeah because then there is low 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 resistance this is what I want from it from an ampere meter so this RE can be very small if I'm using a thin wire of course it can be very big too yeah here I'm I can adapt a little bit yeah you can adapt a little bit 
and but this can be directly used as ampere meter as well. Okay. Things like this, yeah, they are often used in in measurement systems which are built in in our cabinets in our cabinets. Yeah. Measurement systems which are directly built in cabinets or some walls, they are often they are often this moving iron, moving iron things. The advantage is it's robust. Yeah, it withstands a lot of more stress than the moving coil. Yeah, robust and relatively cheap. Okay. On the negative side, we do have not not that accurate. It's not linear, so the force which is here that's uh, relative to i square. Yeah? So I have this this scale here needs to be in a square scale, not a linear scale. It's not linear. Yeah? Basically, that's it. Yeah? It's robust and cheap, but not that accurate and not linear. This this is the moving moving iron part. Okay. Also, one interesting thing, if this is not DC but AC, alternating current, this is working as well. Yeah. Since this is then I squared, yeah, this movement is I squared. If it's alternating, the magnet fields are also alternating, but it does not really matter if north and north pole are distracting each other or south and south pole are distracting each other. The main thing is they should ex ex uh, distract each other. And this is done also with AC. So this thing here can measure direct AC. Yeah? You, don't need, you do not need a rectifier for this to measure AC. If it's a sinus AC, it will even measure the effective value. So that's also interesting, I would say. Next time, we're going to talk about multimeters. We're going to talk about digital multimeters. This, the classical multimeters, which are using the moving coil measurement system, I think I've explained them. I barely explained it, okay, but I've covered it, I would say, in the last video, where I said you can simply select the measurement range or if it's with or without rectifier and so on, by selecting the pre-circuit of the actual moving coil measurement system. Yeah. Next time, like I said, we are going to talk about digital multimeters, yeah, how they are working. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.